Hey everyone, welcome to the next review video. This is on uh, Unit 6, which is rocks. Um, this is mostly on the reference table, so if you can take your reference tables out, we're going to be going over how to use three of the charts and uh, do a couple practice questions. All right, here we go. This is the chart on page six on the top left. It's called the rock cycle, and essentially it shows how each uh, rock is made, each type. So the type are sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. And this chart shows us the processes that create them. So for example, if you want to go from a sedimentary rock over here to a metamorphic, you have to put the rock under heat and pressure and it will create a metamorphic rock. Another example could be if you want to make an igneous rock from that metamorphic rock now, you can do a couple things. You can melt the metamorphic rock into magma and then solidify it to create the igneous rock. Or maybe you can break the rock up by weathering and eroding it into sediments. And then we can deposit and bury it and compact it and cement it, make a new sedimentary rock, melt it into magma, and then solidify it into an igneous rock. So that's why it's called the rock cycle. You can go a bunch of different ways in this. But this will give you a lot of answers to questions. If they ask you how a rock was formed, say uh, metamorphic, you don't have to remember. Just look at what arrows are going into it. Heat and pressure, heat and pressure. So metamorphic is made by heat and pressure. Sedimentary up here is made from deposition and burial and compaction and cementation. All right, so just follow the arrows. The next chart is the igneous rock chart. There is a lot of information on this that you can get out of it to not have to um, memorize any information about igneous rocks. So I'm just gonna go through it quick. All the rock names are in the middle, they're in bold. Um, the environment of formation is on the left. All the intrusive rocks right here are in this uh, row here, and they have bigger crystal sizes, if you look, than the extrusive rocks, which are on the top area. They have smaller crystal sizes. The idea is that an intrusive igneous rock cooled for a very long time, so the crystals are really big. They cool underground in magma. And then extrusive rocks normally cool on the surface from lava. That's why the intrusive rocks have bigger crystals because it's so hot down there. So it takes time for it to cool down and the crystals are able to grow. Um, all the way on the right, you're going to see a bunch of different textures. Glassy is another name for a igneous rock with no crystals, like obsidian. Vesicular means it has gas pockets. There's like little holes in the rock because um, the gas bubbles pop and then it hardens and you get little uh, holes all over the place. So that's uh, texture, crystal size, and intrusive, extrusive. If you go down here, the bold rock names correspond to the color, density, and composition arrows that run left to right. So you can see as you go to the left, so these rocks over here are lighter in color, lower in density, and they're called felsic because they have silicon and aluminum elements inside of them generally. If you go all the way to the right, follow the arrows to the right, that means you're talking higher density, darker color, mafic composition, which means it's rich in iron and magnesium. Those are these. So the more right you go, like dunite and peridotite, those have higher density, mafic composition, darker color. And the bottom shows the minerals that each of the rocks are composed of. So to figure out the minerals, say you want to figure out the minerals in basalt, you would just go straight down from the word basalt, go all the way down, and whatever uh, minerals my line goes through is what minerals are in basalt generally. So basalt can have plagioclase feldspar, it can have a little biotite because that's underneath the box of basalt. It could have pyroxene, olivine, or amphibole. Um, they might ask you to say what percentages of each there are. You could just line up a piece of paper, paper to that line and mark here to here would be how much plagioclase feldspar it has. So you would just take that area and you can measure it using these percentages over here. So this looks like about 25%. Sedimentary rock chart. This is on the top of page 7. Again, a lot of information. There's three types of sedimentary rocks. Inorganic, chemical, organic. The top five here, all the rock names are in bold, are the clastic or they're made of pieces of other rock. Depending on the size of the rocks that are, are uh, that make it up is what the rock name is. So if it's made of clay, which is less than this side, the rock name is called shale. It's got this picture for the symbol for shale. 
if the range of the rock particle is between uh, here and here, you would be talking about siltstone. Now, if the grain size over here is bigger than 0.2, it's conglomerate or breccia, and those are distinguished based on the, the rounded or angular fragments inside of it. Down here for chemical, anything that says crystalline is chemical. So these two are chemical. So that means there are four chemical rocks. Rock salt, rock gypsum, dolestone, and then limestone can be either chemical or bioclastic is organic, meaning it was made from something that was once living. Things to notice on this chart that are important, I would say limestone here is made from calcite, which means limestone bubbles with acid. That's a thing that comes up a lot. Limestone is also made from shell fragments. It could be. And last but not least, coal is made from plant remains. So dead plants uh, compressed and compacted together makes coal. All right, moving on to the last chart, which is metamorphic. Metamorphic chart pretty much is laid out the same as sedimentary. There's only one major difference between this chart, and it's the composition column. So I might as well just start with that. If you want to know the composition of slate, phyllite, schist, or gneiss, you just go across, and whatever bars of minerals are in that row is what its composition is. So, for example, slate is just composed of mica, because that's the only bar that's in that row. But, like... Phyllite over here is composed of garnet, amphibole, feldspar, quartz, and mica. Not pyroxene because that bar is not in that row. So that's pretty much the only difference here. Um, there's two different types of textures, either foliated or non-foliated. Foliation is sort of like, uh, it's a fancy word for mineral alignment. It means all the minerals in them are in like stripes essentially. They're sorted by their density. Um, the top three, slate, phyllite, and schist, just have mineral alignment, but nice down here has this special type of foliation called banding. It essentially makes it look like zebra stripes. They all go through regional metamorphism, which means it's under intense heat and pressure. As the heat and pressure increases downwards, you get these different metamorphic rocks, depending on how much heat and pressure there is. On the bottom part, it's just read the chart. Uh, things to point out is that uh, marble here has calcite in it, so guess what? Marble bubbles with acid. Uh, other things, Hornfels is the only one that has just contact metamorphism. That means just heat to make Hornfels, and it tells you that underneath it. And there's pictures for map symbols on the side. Alright, so those are the charts. So I have a couple of random facts for each type of rock that you should probably know. These are the three for igneous. They have intergrown crystals, glassy texture, and vesicular texture. Remember, vesicular means gas pockets. These are the only characteristics for igneous. Um, these are not characteristics for either of the other two rocks. So if you see these words, it's igneous. These are the characteristics for sedimentary. Fossils or imprints, ripple marks, pieces of other rocks, and layering. If you see these words, it's just sedimentary. These are the keywords for metamorphic. Mineral alignment, banding, foliated, distorted. Distorted means like uh, wavy, like lines like this. If you see these words, it's only metamorphic. Okay, so we're going to do some practice questions. So take out your reference table and see if you can get it. The photograph shows a sandstone erosional feature that formed near the Grand Canyon. What is the range of grain sizes that are most commonly found in this rock? Well, the key word here was you got to know what rock they're talking about, and it's sandstone. So you got to go on your reference table, find sandstone, which it's right here. It's going to be on one of those rock charts, and then look at its grain size, 0 .006, 0 0.006 to 0.02. Yay. B. Number two, which process could lead most directly to the formation of sedimentary rocks? Well, we could do process of elimination. Metamorphic makes metamorphic rock. Solidification of molten material, that makes igneous. Lava, igneous which means it's precipitation of minerals from evaporating water, D. 
and I just want to show you where that is. This is the sedimentary rock chart, and there it is. Precipitates, precipitates, it's all there. Number three, which rock formed as a result of these three stages? I'm seeing burial. That's a sedimentary rock process, according to the rock cycle chart on page six. Decayed plants. We talked about that. It's on the sedimentary rock chart, and decayed plants creates coal. D. It's right down here. Compacted plant remains. Compacted means to, like, push down, and that's what these pictures were showing. Going on, photograph shows magnified view of a rock that can float if placed in the water. Which term best describes this rock? Looks like holes. We talked about what vocab word means little holes. These are gas pockets. This is an igneous rock. The answer is vesicular. So A is right. No other types of rock have holes. It's only igneous and it's called vesicular texture. Number five, which processes lead directly to the formation of igneous rock? Check your rock cycle. Look at igneous rock. Look at the arrows that go into it. Bam, solidification. D. Heat and pressure is metamorphic. Compaction sedimentation is sedimentary. Weathering and erosion makes sediments. So this was all just checking that page six chart right here. It tells you all the answers here. Number six, obsidian's glassy texture indicates that it formed where? We wrote this on the chart as a little note. The smaller the crystal size means it's extrusive, which means it formed on the surface, and it cooled really, really quick. So D is the best answer. Things that uh, cool deep below the Earth's surface slowly would be like granite. There is never a choice that says slowly on the Earth's surface, and there is never a choice that says quickly uh, below. It never works like that. If it's quick, it's always on the surface. And if it's slow, it's always underground. It can never be intertwined. Number seven, based on the composition and foliated texture, that's a buzzword for metamorphic rock. What is this rock? Well, it says it's composed primarily of mica, quartz, and feldspar. You have to go to our metamorphic rock chart. And I knew to go here because it said foliated. See, foliated. So mica, it only is mica, mica, quartz, and feldspar. So it looks like our answers can either be phyllite or schist, maybe. It's definitely not slate, though. And it's definitely not nice. So slate's out because that's doesn't have all of those. Marble, if you look at marble, that is calcite and dolomite, so that's out. Anthracite coal, that's made of carbon, that's out. It's just B. Number eight, rocks are classified as igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic based on what? Everything about rocks is based on how it forms. Igneous rocks are formed from lava. Sedimentary rocks are formed from sediments. Metamorphic rocks are uh, formed from heat and pressure. So method of formation. C. If a metamorphic rock bubbles when a drop of acid is placed on the surface, what is this rock? So we gotta go to metamorphic rock chart. Which one of these would bubble with acid? Yay, we said it. Oh, this is this is sedimentary. That's not right. Metamorphic. Marble. Because it has calcite. Calcite bubbles with acid. So also, if they ask about sedimentary, limestone would bubble with acid because it has calcite. All right. So that looks like it would be C. That's the rock unit. I will see you on the next video. Good luck.